So the Halo Infinite flight has come and passed for us guys, and there is a lot to talk about it. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the weapons, the vehicles, the equipment, the aiming especially, maps, game modes, and more about Halo Infinite's flight, and what needs to be changed, and what needs to be praised. So do you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Well, it seems like we're back here again, and the flight has left us with no Halo Infinite to be played. Sadness has struck the lobby. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So I've provided my first impressions of the flight, and first impressions are pretty good, but after taking some time to look into it, dissect things compared to previous Halos, and really think about what this flight was like. I wanted to provide my final thoughts. And we're gonna be sticking to gameplay related things, guys. So if you wanna hop around to the parts you wanna check out, I have timestamps in the description down below. And let me know what your thoughts are on the flight as well. I do read most of my comments and try to reply as many as possible. If you guys like these discussion kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button as it really does help out the video and channel and get a better place within the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as I ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure to tap subscribe so let's get into the content here. So this first section I want to talk about are the weapons. It's kind of like the big point, right? Because we're playing a first person shooter. How does it feel to shoot things in a first person shooter? And in Halo Infinite, well, the weapons are pretty awesome. I was really worried with the PvP flight that we would see something that like, would be obviously need to be buffed or nerfed or something like that. And for the most part, not so much. There wasn't anything that was glaringly obvious that needed to be changed. There is no CE Magnum situation where like that's the only gun to use and everything else is pointless. The sandbox for Halo Infinite and the weapons is actually very well done and pretty much almost all weapons are viable in some capacity. Some more than others though, and I definitely want to get into that. So let's talk about like the common weapons that you find. Those are being like the battle rifle, commando, psychic, AR. I'm gonna throw in the needler and the plasma pistol as well. The BR sounds fantastic, hits super well, super strong, super well played, and I think it fits its role perfectly as more of a mid to kind of long-ish range kind of weapon because other weapons like the commando, which is kind of much more of a shorter range version of the battle rifle, and the psychic especially can actually outkill the battle rifle in close range. As you can see within this quick little clip video of the psychic versus the battle rifle, you can see the psychic claps somebody in 1.2 seconds essentially, where the battle rifle is about 1.55 seconds, so the psychic does kill faster. The thing is though, the psychic is much more tuned to close range where the low aim assist, very short red reticle range, and the battle rifle is much more tuned to mid long range where if you were going like sidekick versus BR like mid range, yeah, that BR is gonna win, which is perfect. A lot of people have been calling for a nerf for the assault rifle, and I can kind of agree with that a little bit. I would like to play around with it with some more maps to kind of see how it really does play out. If it's gonna get nerfed, I can agree with that, but maybe like a little bit of a wider spread if it does get any kind of nerf. I think a very, very slight nerf is all that's needed. I don't wanna see it like get put down to like Halo 2 SMG levels. The Needler is amazing. The Needler is probably the best Needler that we've ever had. Not that it's like overpowered or anything, because previously we've had very underpowered needlers, but I think the tracking fits well. The damage it does is very good as well. We're getting probably out, keep up with like a battle rifle and stuff like that. The plasma pistol, I didn't really play around with a whole lot, mainly because it didn't really feel that great to play with. Maybe increase the honing for the plasma pistol shot. I'm not sure. I really didn't see it in the gameplay as a whole lot and I didn't really use it a whole lot. I think it's mainly because it might need a little bit of a buff there, but just slight. Now the secondary power weapons like your shotgun and your heat wave that we had for this flight, I felt a little underpowered. Again, like I didn't really play with the Bulldog or the Heat Wave a whole lot because every time I picked them up, it felt like I was putting like a handicap on myself. And obviously if I'm playing a shooter, I want to try to get as many kills as possible. So I don't want to nerf myself. I'm totally fine with the Bulldog being a two shot kill, but maybe extend that range a little bit more for the Bulldog so I can get that two shot kill a little bit easier. And the Heat Wave is very interesting. I think it actually might be more of a BTB weapon to be honest, because Forerunner weapons can shoot through vehicles. I mean, I saw a clip in BTB where a Heat Wave chewed up a Warhawk way faster than any like one-on-one -on -one gunfight. I love the way it shoots. I love the way it looks. Um, I just like to see more functionality, a little bit more lethality to it. Maybe kind of borrow that scatter shot effect where if you can ricochet a shot, it will kind of like bend its way towards the player to kind of give you that competitive edge to kind of extend that range of the shotgun. I like to see the same with the heat wave as well to make it a little bit more lethal because after playing with the heat wave for a couple weeks, that seeing that ricochet shot that we had in that multiplayer trailer, that's a really hell of an insane shot. The Ravager had a 
great like utility to it as well where the burst fire deals out a lot of damage it's kind of like a more lethal kind of setup with it but that charge shot also does an area of denial kind of thing i didn't get to utilize that a whole lot because i either wasn't coming across it in total control too often and i rarely played strongholds but i could see it being a great way to kind of deter people from going from areas uh, it's not going to kill anybody but i think it just adds another utility to the weapon to make it more unique than just like another thing that kills for the power weapons we had in the flight we had the sniper rocket launcher gravity hammer and skewer for the gravity hammer i really like the change of having a bigger blast radius and a slower swing time that really just feels like you're just swinging like this heavy hitting kind of hammer it really does a lot of damage and it's really freaking cool i've seen some sentiment online about the rocket launcher being a little inconsistent i can kind of agree with that one as well there were multiple times where like i was like how did i not kill that guy and also times where like how did that also kill me in the same process now I'm not sure if like it's a bug within the game or if that's just like the blast radius is different. Maybe you have to be a little more cautious utilizing the rocket launcher now. But like overall, like if it stayed the same, I'd be happy with it. The skewer is a very interesting weapon because I think that's another weapon that's very much more like for BTB vehicle focused kind of anti-vehicle weapon. Just because playing it with like on live fire, we're doing like PvP stuff. Um, it was kind of pointless to pick up. I'd prefer not to see the skewer on maps that don't have vehicles on it just because that's definitely what the intention for the skewer is. So like 4v4 maps like Behemoth, yes, with vehicles on it, yeah, put the skewer on there. BTB maps absolutely have a skewer. For just like your standard like player versus player 4v4 arena stuff, maybe not so much. The sniper rifle did feel a lot better within this flight as well. As the five times zoom kind of aiming did feel a little bit smoother, a little bit more natural to play around with. Though I did have to tweak that a little bit, which we'll talk about later when it comes to aiming within this video. But towards the end of the flight, like I was landing headshots like relatively easy. Now for the leak weapons, like the Sentinel Beam, Mangler, Sword, and Cinder Shot, I will say the Cinder Shot is really freaking cool it shoots like dubstep explosions it's so freaking awesome the sentinel beam looks awesome hits like a truck the crazy recoil just looks super cool the mangler kind of plays like a hand cannon from destiny in a way which is a weapon we haven't really had a whole lot within halo so it's definitely an interesting take it hurts like a three shot kill and the sword is well the sword and it looks awesome this next section i want to talk about vehicles and for the vehicles that we had we had the warhog ghost mongoose wasp banshee and scorpion tank and the ghost mongoose and wasp all felt Great. The Warhog was fun to drive as well. I like the ability to kind of rotate it in the air now that you have in Halo Infinite. But my only critique with the Warhog is that like the reticle for the gunner is just way too small. Obviously when you have a lower FOV, it seems to kind of open up that reticle a bit more. But I play on like 100, 105 FOV and like whenever I try to aim my target on somebody, my target reticle completely covers what I'm trying to shoot, making it kind of difficult to see. So I would like to see much more of like somewhat traditional form of the reticle to return, or at least some more visually easy easier to identify reticle that doesn't cover up when I'm shooting. The Banshee in this game handles completely different now. If anything, it's actually way better and actually kind of a little bit easier to use. Traditionally, the Banshee has always had like this downward drifter. If you don't move, it just kind of slowly moves downwards. That doesn't happen anymore in this game. The Banshee just keeps moving forward, which I actually kind of like that idea a little bit more. I've always felt like trying to pilot the Banshee. I'm always kind of like fighting it for the most part. Uh, this Banshee was super snappy, super fun to use. You know, very agile and kind of played a bit like a glass cannon, like kind of like the Reach version of the Banshee. And with the tank, well, I only had two times to play with it within the 20 plus hours of BTB I played because it like rarely ever dropped, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video as well. But the tank is awesome. It's a big heavy boy. You can feel the weight when you're trying to move the turret, move through the, out the map. It's not like a super agile thing anymore. It's like meant to be like this big heavy thing that's going to be menacing, dealing out a lot of damage. And of course, we had to talk about the equipment within Halo Infinite, it's a big part of the multiplayer. Uh, we had the grapple shot, repulsor, and drop wall within this flight, though we did have the leaked thruster as well. I think that the grapple shot might be one of the greatest additions to the Halo sandbox ever. It's just so much fun to use. It has so much utility to it. If anything, it might be a little overpowered for how great it is. But the thing is that I don't want them to nerf it because it's just so much fun to play with how it is right now. The repulsor is pretty good as well. Uh, you know, people have been talking about maybe having like a charge up effect to it rather than just like pressing X and instantly throwing people around. I can agree with that as well because there's a lot of times we're playing on recharge, for example, I hop up on somebody to try to get the surprise on them. They turn around and just repulse me. I fall off the map and I'm dead. If there was a recharge time to kind of just like hold X for maybe like a split second or something like that, maybe I could have walked away with winning that gunfight. So I think there might be some tweak in there that might be needed with it. Put a little bit more thought to using the repulsor rather than just having 
be so reactionary. The drop wall was buffed in this flight and I actually do like the buff with it. I do like where it's sitting right now. I don't want it to be like the bubble shield in Halo 3. That thing was really annoying to deal with. The drop wall within Halo Infinite does feel a lot more effective with that shorter deploy time when it comes to the shield. And the thruster, I didn't really get a chance to play around with, but I did watch some videos on it and it looked kind of like, well, like Halo 5's thruster for the most part. Once we get a chance to actually play around with it, I'll give you guys a better th thoughts on it. And when we're talking about equipment and pickups, we'll talk about overshield and camo while we're at it. I felt overshield was a bit weak. You know, normally it would be probably lasts for about like one gunfight and afterwards it's gone completely. I like to see maybe a little bit of a buff come to the overshield, have a bit more of a game changer. And uh, active camo though, I think is perfect where it's at. Some people were saying it's overpowered. I don't think so. I've been able to see people like in my 1440p monitor uh, who are utilizing camo. I think I sniped somebody with like skew or something like that when they were in camo. But you could definitely still see it. I think the camo though is perfect where it's at right now. Now one of the biggest complaints I've been seeing throughout the entirety of this fight is aiming within Halo Infinite. I've heard complaints on mouse and keyboard, I've heard complaints on controller as well, and it was something that kind of carried over from the previous flight on top of that. And I will say that Halo Infinite might be the hardest Halo game to hit your shots on, but I think that's actually for a good thing. Because ever since Halo Reach is when I really noticed a big emphasis on the buff to bullet magnetism and aim assist that it's been kind of feeling a little too easy to hit your shots, honestly. And this is a great way to have like lower aim assist, lower bullet magnetism to help balance out that controller versus mouse and keyboard difference. But yeah, like when I first started playing PvP, I was not really having that great of a time playing on controller. Yeah, you know, I was over aiming, I was under aiming all over the place. It just didn't feel very consistent. That's because I carried over my same sensitivity is from Halo 5 and MCC, which I normally run about 5.5 sensitivity and default acceleration with the lowest dead zones to avoid any stick drift. But then when I was streaming, my chat actually suggested to lower my sensitivity and bump up my acceleration. And once I did that, I felt a lot better. I lowered my sensitivity all the way down to two, but then I turned up my acceleration up to five. And since there was low aim assist, low bullet magnetism, having that lower sensitivity really helped me stay on target a lot better. And that bumped up acceleration helped it. So when I hit my max turn radius, that speed to hit that max turn speed, it was faster. And so then it wasn't coming across the issue of having such a low sensitivity about a hard time to turn around. In fact, the sensitivity I just suggested is very similar to the Halo Pro Shotzi during Halo Halo 5, he had one horizontal sensitivity, five vertical sensitivity, and five acceleration. So it's not me being crazy here, like Halo Pros utilize the same kind of system as well. I did change my sniper zoom for five times scope, but to 1.3 my sensitivity as well. That really helped make things feel a lot smoother. And towards the end of the flight, I was actually really landing my shots. I was feeling really good about my sidekick, about my snipes against, along with my battle rifle. Like, Things were feeling really good. So I think that Halo Infinite is just a very different kind of game. I think people are trying to bring over their old habits from like MCC and Halo 5, and that's not exactly translating one-to-one -to, -one to Halo Infinite. It's a totally different beast. Well, the best thing to do, I think, is just to jump into training mode, put the bots on play fight, and then just try to shoot bots that are strafing on you and, you know, play around with things. Experiment, find out what works best for you. That's kind of what sensitivity really is. This next section I want to talk about the maps. Obviously, it's very important to have good maps within a shooter and Halo Infinite certainly had some really good maps and some yeah, maps when it comes to the flight that we played with. Hands down, my favorite maps were Recharge and Behemoth. I love the flow of Recharge. It's so circular. I feel like I can move around quite easily, get into engagement, and not have to worry about like getting picked off across the map or have some funky spawns or anything like that. Like Recharge, I think, just plays out super well. I could totally see that map being like a competitive map for sure. Uh, also, the map I really enjoyed was Behemoth because when I played Behemoth, I felt like that's when the sandbox of Halo Infinite was finally let loose with the vehicles and the different kinds of equipment you can pick up. And this, the map and visuals of it are incredible. Behemoth might be one of those instant classics that we'll see like remakes of down the line. Playing CTF on Behemoth is a ton of fun. I could also see Super Fiesta being a lot of fun on Behemoth as well. Because normally I'm not a fan of 4v4 vehicle maps, but this one is an exception. The other maps we got a chance to play on were Life Fire and Bazaar. Life Fire is a solid map, nothing too crazy. I'm not enthusiastic about it, but I don't dislike it at all. I think it's a really great map as well. Simple to understand, easy to pick up, and just a good map, just overall, really. Nothing too crazy, nothing too interactive with it. It's just a solid map. The Bazaar, I'm feeling kind of iffy on. Like, yeah, the visuals of it are great because it's a new Mombasa, which I haven't been there since Halo 2. But the thing with Bazaar, though, is that the way the gameplay works, it's just like you're clashing into each other head on the whole time. And it's pretty tough to get around the enemy team, pull off a flank or any kind of good moves. It seems like everyone's just kind of peeking corners for the most part and just like seeing who's the most impatient whoever dies. 
And a lot of times on Bazaar, I kept finding myself like trying to figure out where they're spawning because if I predict what side they're spawning on and it's the wrong side, I have to like completely loop and go back around. Like it just doesn't really have that great of flow. It's still like a solid map, don't get me wrong, but I'm just not a really big fan of it. And when Bazaar comes up, I'm like, eh, I'll play through it. That fragmentation though for BTB, yeah, fragmentation is an awesome BTB map. I had a ton of fun playing BTB. Like I said, I had like 20 plus hours played this weekend because BTB was just that much fun. I can tell that they really try to focus on making sure that fragmentation can play well with any kind of weapon within the sandbox on that map. There's really good long range, there's mid range or short range gunfights, good variety there, good elevation changes as well. Just like the mix between like man-made hexagonal kind of geometry and those bases compared to like natural geometry as well. Just like it's such a well-rounded map that like it's like an instant classic for me as well. Like I absolutely loved fragmentation. I had no issue playing on it for like 20 plus hours over the weekend because it's just such a good map. Next, I want to talk about the game modes that we had available, guys. We had training mode, weapon drills, your classic CTS Slayer and Strongholds, but then we had the new mode of Total Control. Training mode, again, like I praised earlier, is such a great place for you to go in and warm up, practice, understand the maps and learn the mechanics of Halo. Like seriously, I think training mode might even replace the octagon that we've normally have for practicing and warming up for Halo. And it's gonna be a great place for new players to hop in, play around with some of the new weapons, play around with some of the maps and stuff like that, get more acclimated to the mechanics of Halo, where uh, it might be kind of doing like your homework kind of in the way, which a lot of people don't like to do when playing their games, is like to hop in and play. But training mode really is beneficial for your aim, for your map knowledge and your game sense as well. The weapon drills are fun because it helps you kind of understand the intricacies of each weapon as well. Like when I was popping in, I was like playing with the battle rifle and BTB. I was like, I feel like I should be landing these four shots, but I just, I'm not doing it. And I was wondering why. So I hopped into the weapon drills, played around with the battle rifle, found out I need to aim more for like upper chest rather than for the head once I'm going for like that fourth shot to get the kill because of the way the recoil and the bullet spread works with that battle rifle. So it helps you learn some of that, like lead times as well for like the skewer, understand the aim assist, understand the bloom that's back in this game as well. Which I saw some people complain about bloom with the commando especially, as well as the sidekick. And uh, I think the reason why the bloom is there is because we're using hit scan weapons again in Halo. And you don't want to be lasered across the map. You want to find some way to kind of like pull that back in a little bit. And the best way to do that is to add bloom to your weapons. Now, the bloom resets super fast. It doesn't get in the way of your gameplay like Reach's does or Halo CE's bloom does. So if Halo was to have bloom with hit scan weapons, I think Halo Infinite does it right. Now for the game modes that we played within the multiplayer we had slayer ctf and strongholds for 4v4 and well they played like well slayer ctf and strongholds you know there's not much else to talk about right there that it's tried and true it works and it's fun i really enjoyed the new total control mode within btb because it felt like familiar right like the three capture zone kind of domination kind of game mode but with a different kind of twist to it and i think what it does it really helps focus the gameplay on btb they create like these really awesome chaotic like really fun moments that we don't usually have when it comes to like playing ctf or slayer and btb especially so if there's a way I could just like play only total control, I would absolutely love that because one thing it just has more action, it has longer games, which I actually like when it comes to BTB. It has more vehicle play as well. I found that Slayer and CTF didn't really have much in the way of vehicle play where I could total control. Those are the only times I get a chance to play with a tank and uh, well, tanks are awesome. Tank beats everything, obviously. But my only complaint about the mode for BTB is that it felt very infantry focused as that most of the times vehicles were kind of just like instantly destroyed as they were used because like when I mentioned in a previous video about my thoughts on BTB was that with these pelican drops, the vehicles drop in at the same time. Normally players will just zoom the vehicle into the enemy spawn or sometimes they'll ram into the other vehicle. They focus on each other, destroy each other and the vehicles are gone. They have to wait another two or three minutes or whatever to when the next vehicle round would come in. And most of the times it was just like a ghost that was being dropped, not to the very end of the game where you'd see like a wasp, a banshee or even a tank. Personally, I like to see like a tank, a wasp, or a banshee kind of happen like maybe like 40% through the match or something like that, kind of like in the middle early stage. They kind of just mix things up a little bit, kind of get the gameplay moving and things like that. Obviously, I'm not calling for like vehicles to take over BTB, not exactly that at all. I do like the infantry focus, but I like to see vehicles take a little bit more of an accent to kind of like spice up the gameplay a little bit from here and there. And those are all my thoughts when it comes to this flight. It's a long video, guys, but obviously we had two full weekends of 4v4 and BTB, so we had a lot of stuff to talk about. So if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.